everybody. Welcome to Dark Match. I'm Tifus, and I enjoy looking at pictures of naked women. I am Magpie, and I'm a huge Beatles fan. I'm Christopher Says, and I just saw another another walking movie where walking acts like walking. I am Backlash, and I have a big pile of candy sitting next to me. And as always, it is time for What is Iron Sheik Tweeting Now? <clears throat> I found out on the internet, Osama is no good motherfucker, and he have no dick anymore, and can fuck himself. <laughs> now, here's my question. <laughs> if, if, here's my question. If he has no dick, how can he fuck himself? The back door? Uh, I, I think with, if you lack a dick, it's probably a little bit easier, because all you got to do is grab anything and insert. Or like, substitute your thumb. Wrong on this. I'm not exactly a subject matter expert, but... I, I guess, guess he so. uses toys then. Yeah. Nah, maybe maybe he just uses his balls. What's ball silence? This might be the oddest start we've ever had. USA, <laughs> USA, USA. 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 <laughs> uh, hey. That is fucked up. So this is another week of the dark match where we're going to be talking about the on uh, current events in wrestling this week. That Starting is the, with the, uh, the weekly mainstream shows. Uh, we're, it's the Rock's birthday to, this week on Raw. Yay! Can we sing Happy Birthday, guys. Ooh. Nah, I think we'll, we'll get to them I'm singing not, Happy Birthday. Singing the shit to him because they did it on Monday. Yeah. All right. Anyway, we start Let's, off. And commemorating this very special once-in-a-lifetime event of Osama bin Laden being killed, they uh, take it on themselves to air a video reminding us of another once-in-a-lifetime event, uh, 9-11, and, you know, announcing, uh, showing the footage from the previous night where Cena, after winning the cage match, announces, hey, we killed Osama bin Laden. But, of course, you can't say we killed him because that's not PG. We, we captured and we compromised him. to a we compromised that motherfucker's ass with a donut. Wait, <laughs> no. um, but yeah, they, um, they they show that video package, and then surprise, surprise, surprise! Probably the biggest, like, coolest part of the night was uh, they showed the singing of the national anthem by none other than Lillian Vivian Garcia. Garcia. Yes. God bless her. <laughs> God, we have good seen to have her back. in like. I don't even know how long. Uh, Maybe what, a year when, or so. What year did she bounce? Like oh six, oh seven. That was after that. It was it was more recent than that. But um, I forgot what she left. Um, well, well, she she disrespected the business. She she had to go and do something else, and thus she disrespected the business. No, she didn't disrespect, disrespect the business. Apparently, she left on good terms. I, I'm, just, I'm kidding, sir. Yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> yeah. So Lillian but, um, performs. And then uh, The Rock comes out and thanks everyone. Be- before doing so, he, he dedicates his the, the night to to everyone serving overseas, and the including you, Tifus, even though you're not doing it at, right now. But but uh, <clears throat> he he starts off like you know how you have like a roast or you have like a birthday celebration and like the the celebrity that's featured comes up and says all those stupid like uh, witty pithy kind of shit. Well. The Rock doesn't. He 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 discards any notions of that by just saying a lot of dick jokes. Because dick, dick jokes, jokes are funny. Dick jokes and innuendo by by saying, "Oh, when I was born, the doctors told his, his parents, oh, he sure is Johnson.'" <laughs> and uh, Johnson compares himself to the lead singer of Menudo when he was in high school and had an afro and mustache. And but nonetheless, I ate more pie than King Kong Bundy at a Polish ba- bakery. Hey oh. Yeah. <laughs> I really could have done without that entire bit. Then again, I yeah. could have done a lot uh, without a lot of his shtick that night. Well, too much, too much rock is just not that good. Well, actually, yeah. It, 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 oh, go ahead, Slacker. Endless pretty much mentioned it on the boards that, like, I, I don't feel the same way about overall about the rock, but she's he or she, I, whoever, it, pretty much said that. Like the Rock is basically his catchphrases. So that's that's all he says. That's the only promo that he cuts, and especially nowadays. Like he, since he's not in any active angles, even though they're they're booking a match for him in the next WrestleMania. 
Yeah, th- this whole night seems weird to me just because it's like, okay, Rock shows up uh, that one night in Anaheim, and we're like, oh, my God, this is the shit, which rightfully so because we haven't seen him in the WWE ring in a while. And then he's being the Rock, and then he makes fun of Cole, and then gets everybody wild up, and this is cool. And then Viva Satellite, Viva Satellite, Viva Satellite, shows up for WrestleMania, that awful event, and then, okay, now it's my birthday? Oh, I'm going to show up live. Hey, everybody, stroke my ego. But um, uh, and, and again, I, I like The Rock, but but this the whole episode revolving around him, like it was it wasn't needed at this point. Like his his birthday should have been closer to WrestleMania. I, I, I take out I, t- <laughs> <laughs> I take out old so. probably about uh, half an hour in. Then I'm like, yeah, yeah. we're done with this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if only some if only someone had the courage to interrupt The Rock during a promo. Well, yeah, well, GM uh, tried be to. What you wish uh, for, sir. The GM tried to, and um, Cole tried to read the announcement and. Rock called him into the rings, like, if you're going to do this, be a man and do it in here. So he gets in the rings, like... Uh, Cole's going to read his announcement, and uh, Rock says, hey, uh, you're using, like, oh, you're the big man now. Well, get in the ring and face me. So Cole, ugh, he, he takes off his jacket, and he's wearing a Celtics jersey, and that is my goddamn team. Cole, you are making me look bad. Stop it! So Cole gets in the ring, and... Basically, he reads his announcement and says, like, you have to apologize to the mystery GM because you disrespected him last time you were on Raw. And then you also have to apologize to me because you disrespected me as well. Oh, I know they don't know. Have it. I know they don't have any clue what the GM is. Do we still have to put up with this shit? I don't know. I mean, like we bitch about TNA's The Network, but at least next week we're going to find out who it is. Oh, yeah. Well, oh man, I hate to put. Yeah, you're you're right. I hate to put one over for for TN. Well, actually, no. Like I, I want them to do better, but. Oh my God! Wait, we're the, using the fact of the matter is like the example. Ah, oh, what's happening? Yeah. The GM should have oh, been. It's collapsing revealed. on itself. The GM should have been revealed at. Uh, when was it? I, I think it was WrestleMania. Like there, there was one moment where people said, like, why don't they just get it out of the way? But of course, they they can't think of a, a very adequate answer. It's it's pretty much like the the. Straight Edge Society, Joey Mercury situation. Well, it's been it, over a damn year. It would have been cool if it was like Michael Cole and uh, Jerry the King Lawler in the ring, and then the GM does that stupid noise. Josh Matthews gets up, and he looks like he's going to read it. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to say it myself. I'm sick of your shit. I'm the general manager, and this is how I'm going to run the show. And Josh Matthews goes on a reign that, te- that terrorizes and scares everyone in that locker room. <laughs> Why? Because he's, he proposes to become an official member of the roster? Yeah, it's just one of those things. It's like you wouldn't expect Josh Matthews, and it wouldn't end in a stupid storyline. I'll take anything at this fucking point. But either way, uh, uh, just... They, they've just, had it go so many different directions, so I don't really see how they could make it be anyone and be like, oh, it was him, and everything makes sense now. You know? It's going to be have to be someone that's not really interacted with them and just kind of like just doing things just because he wants to. Um, yeah. Going anyway, on to, to conclude the segment, essentially, uh, The Rock says, well, you know what, Michael Cole, you're right. I've disrespected you, and I want to show some respect to you, so shake, just shake my hand. And after maybe like a, about a minute of Cole contemplating from, understandably so, The Rock grabs him, rock bottoms him, people's elbows him, and uh, quite happy about that. The segment didn't need to be there in the first place, but nonetheless, they got to pad this out some way. His and music hits, he, he, he's like, uh, the Rock's music hit, hits, he's pretty much like, oh, cut that shit. Here's Pitbull. I, ah! uh, before, before we get to bitching about Pitbull, um, when, did you guys talk about, you know, Cole jumped up, he took off his shirt, and he's wearing the Celtics jersey? Yes, yeah, so oh, how no, you made me afraid, how you made me ashamed to be a Celtics fan. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't, and, uh, I'm, not, and, uh, I'm not a basketball when, fan, uh, is that when, like uh, a disrespect? When, when the uh, Rock went to, uh, Rock bottom and everything before he did it. He says, "Go heat, bitch," and they oh, said, yeah, so it sounded almost like he said, "Go eat shit." Yeah, because they, <laughs> they pretty much uh, bleeped the entire thing, so you couldn't even. They didn't even allow him to say heat. But um, Pitbull, honestly, I'd much rather listen to the Rock's theme with with Jim Johnston's really lazy solos and and really like confusing solos rather than Pitbull. I haven't hadn't even heard of him before before tonight. I'd rather listen to the Impact themes and listen to Pitbull. That idiot just 
that idiot just um has a simple beat and just um yells nonsensical things in Spanish, and that's how he gets number one record because stupid people like repetitive shit. But um, if the segment did anything right, it's that, that Jr. pretty much joins him afterwards. Like, I love the system that that, that they have with Jr. these days after WrestleMania. It's just he keeps on popping in and out like every time, uh, like something in the angle like disposes of Lawler or Cole. <laughs> but it, it's always good to see Jr. But at the same time, I think I speak for I definitely speak for Noli for anybody who's sick of Cole when I say just have Jim Ross throw tear gas in there, close off the. Uh, coal mine and just have him do it over the show while Michael Cole suffers in tear gas and then we can do away with him. No, I yeah, keep saying that. We keep having to remind you it's an open air box. Hey, I said seal the top. Put a put a piece of sheet of paper over it. It but, still uh, would hurt. Before, before Jr. rejoins him, Dwayne Wade and LeBron James uh put him over. They they wish him a happy birthday and uh, of course Dwayne says, "Oh, I'm the better Dwayne." Uh, <laughs> Our uh, truth and Morrison are supposed to have like a match, basically revenge for our truth fucking up a spot, which was revenge for John Morrison fucking up our truth spot. But, but as John, as Joe Mo's coming in, our truth pretty much attacks him from behind, and that's uh, tossed out of the window. And uh, that, that's why you don't enter in slow motion. Wait, wait. Our truth finisher, finisher is, is called, called shut, shut up. up. I thought it was called the lie detector. I thought it was called the flat line. Does he actually have a finisher? No, it's it's the down like the arm the arm trap uh, STO I think. It's a downward spiral. Yeah, and it and it should basically be called I have no finisher. It's 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 his version of uh, I fall down. Even though I think he's a good worker, like contrary to Madison Rain, he's a good worker. But it's called the shut up apparently. <laughs> oh God. I remember for a while they were giving him the scissor kick. Like it's like, oh, it's new Booker T. <laughs> I guess they stopped that whole thing. It's Booker T for a newer generation. And uh, a- after that, like commercial, we we come back with Jimmy Kimmel wishing him a happy birthday and doing a, a like a an excessively corny joke with uh, him sitting on a bag of candy, so he has a candy ass. Great. Uh, really want to see that. Yeah, well, Jimmy Kimmel's a master of the simple jokes. JR very very successfully puts over that that doctors are checking on John Morrison, which like any other commentator, you wouldn't get that little tidbit of information. Well, maybe, but either way, uh, match Maurice versus Kelly Kelly. Gee, I haven't seen. Well, Kelly Kelly is newly on Raw, and we we saw her a bunch of times on SmackDown. Have not seen Maurice in a long time due to her being tied up with her NXT hosting duties. But there's and we're not obviously a reason for this. Maurice. Trust me, we're not complaining about that. We're just saying. Oh, we won't be seeing her for an even longer, longer time. Because yeah. although not as bad as Alicia Fox, it's pretty much just an excuse for for Karma to to come in and just implant bust the fuck out of her while Kelly Kelly runs away. <laughs> Kelly Kelly actually didn't run. She was. Par- I liked her facial expressions when she was just like, uh, 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 "What do I run? Is it staying?" Uh, uh. She was actually feeling like as well. The thing is, we don't even know what um, the Implant Buster's new name is going to be because we know it can't be called that. No, the Barbie Killer. Yeah. Barbie Buster. Yeah, it's like I, I see certain sites trying to put it over as Kelly Kelly being frozen in the ring, but certain people don't know how to play like Karma coming coming in. Like you Kelly have Kelly, a look just of shock and fear in your face if it's going to be frozen. You just can't be like sitting there like uh. What? It's Kelly Kelly saying I don't know what how to act. I mean, yeah, we'll we'll get I to this. But Layla, Layla did a better job. I thought. I thought. No, the Layla's better expressions by far. Well, Layla's the superior diva. <laughs> anyway. Uh, moving uh, on. Miz moving on, Karma comes out and kills her. Yeah. Miz is basically in backstage in his dressing room pulling, like, remember when Jericho got uh, screwed out of a title shot and he was just sitting in backstage looking off in the distance? It's pretty much what Miz is doing, and, and A Rise, SmackDown's own A Rise, is, is trying to snap him out of it. it yeah, aren't they a great couple? Like, where were you when I lost the title? Uh, uh, anyways, uh, before we go to commercial, we get another uh, happy birthday wish from Paul. Where my career will end in about two years, Walker. 
Oh, Jesus, we have to cross promote that piece of shit too. Yes, yeah. yes, we do. God it's the it, Rock. Rocky. Of course, we have to. I mean, I'm glad he's back because I like The Rock, but I'm getting really sick of this shit. Now let's promote shitty movies and celebrities. Well, you have to promote the shitty movie if the guy you're trying to promote is in the sh- shitty movie. I understand that, but at the same time, ugh. If he had been under contract, I would have promoted Tooth Fairy too. <laughs> you're gonna get a lot of these cutaways, these random celebrities just being, "Hey, Rock, happy birthday!" <laughs> um, I mean, it's goddamn ridiculous. You think about, uh, you think about all the like matches they cut short and cut out of WrestleMania for like silly stuff with The Rock back at WrestleMania. They're doing it again here. I mean, you just think about how much more time can be spent on actual storylines and things that we won't be uh, pissed off about is still going on a year from now. It just goes back to like when they uh, had the um, guest host, and they're like, let's play a celebrity ridiculous amount of money who looks down on the wrestling business just to promote their shit. And yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna take time away from our boys because we want to be an entertainment company instead of a wrestling company. Uh, it it'll it won't be around next next week or or this coming Monday. So, oh, but, always, but, yeah, they'll uh, find a way. But you, you, you know, as long as they have any time to have the Rock on, you can start to expect this bullshit. Yeah. But um, Sam Sam Jackson is the next one who who sends him a birthday wish and. Yeah, eh, the only thing I have to say about this is it's an evil fucking room. Yeah. Sam, stock Samuel L. Jackson reference or joke. Uh, and we we move to a backstage comedy segment. Rock is partying with the divas and other people in the background, whether from Raw or SmackDown. Uh, he Teddy Long wishes him a happy birthday. Uh, Kozlov <laughs> wishes him a happy birthday and says, "Oh, I've been, I'm writing a new script for your." For your next for a movie for you, and Santino's comes in dressed as his character from Fast Five, followed by Hornswoggle dra- dresses Scorpion King, and Kali dresses the Tooth Fairy. Ah! Yeah, he, he's, <laughs> you guys get you can't it? Have a it's subtle match. pop culture references. Yeah. Ah. Why? Honestly, like it was much better when John Cena was making fun of him for that. Well, because John Cena like tore John Cena when he tore the Rock. He had a valid point. Hey guys, let, let, let's move to something positive because this is followed up by Ron Simmons being awesome. Oh yes, and the only way that he can be awesome, well, only way, and it is prime. He could have been yeah. just one Let's simple go. single word. Damn! <laughs> they really have to be, do a thing where they where they they have him saying damn, and then they cut to the to the person who who is saying it to and. Their hair is being blown away, obviously, by a fan off screen. (laughs) Yeah. Enthusiasm. You can see, viewers, you can see how enthusiastic we are about this segment. Yeah, this this wasn't that great of a raw. I mean, some... It was was a jarring experience because you had continuation of storylines we actually care about, but you still had Miz and Waller going on. And you had this jarring... This is Rock's birthday party. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, and they couldn't even have Mick Foley in there. I understand why they couldn't, but, you know, that would have been the only thing you need to make this entire thing work. Is have Mick Foley show up and maybe Yerbel. And that's Thanks it. again, TNA, for fucking something up. That could have been cool. No, 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 no. TNA, TNA allowed him, to, was was going to allow him to do it. It's Vince that didn't. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't want to have it. Guys, so nope, I'm blaming everything for TNA. My life is easier when I just blame everything on TNA. <laughs> oh, no, I, I don't, I don't blame either party for this because you know Mick Foley made his decision to go to TNA. It's true. Oh, sorry, I sorry, I, I just blame everything on TNA. It makes my life easier. Who lost my shoes? TNA. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, moving on from Magpie's okay. uh, rambling insanity. Uh, basically, we get another uh, half-hearted birthday wish from Steve Carell. Oh God, and, that uh, was that was hard to watch. Yeah. And then, uh, hey, it's time for a match. There's actually wrestling on this show. It's John yay. Cena and Miz in a rematch. Not a bad one, either. It, it was a good match, even though the finish was fucking balls. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, the, basically, the, the, the entire thing was Miz pulling out all the stops, like really wanting the title back. 
like almost creating the argument that, that like he he was a credible champion because like he's he's doing everything he can in in a legitimate sense to to get it back. I mean up until the end. Yeah, I mean they actually made Miz look actually competent in this. I mean he kicked out of the uh, attitude adjustment. He did. Well, yeah. well, he he is a competent performer and he is a good wrestler. It's just whether or not they want to make him look like that. And when he's the thing is with his uh, heel persona as the champion, he kind of want to keep him. Sp- like slimy and sleazy and having to cheat to win for the most part, but at some point you got to give him a legitimate win. You know, I mean, I would think that would only happen when they do something where, where there's like a double turn where he becomes a, a face, but like there, there would, there's no way in hell that seen is turning heel. So, well, he's gotten legitimate wins. I mean, we all remember his awesome match that he had with Daniel Bryan on raw. Oh yeah. yeah. But I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, at, at some point on the main event level, you know, you have to give him a legitimate win over John Cena at some point. You want him to look credible, even when he turns face. If he suddenly is able to win his matches without cheating, that looks a little bit silly. Yeah, but the the finish of this match was uh, Riley distracted the ref. Miz hits uh, Cena with the belt, and basically he covers him for the three count, and the belt is is basically concealed by the two wrestlers. Yeah, the, the ref can't see it. And I, I hated how they did this because Miz yeah. hit him with the belt and the, the, the ref turned and looked and he was holding the belt behind his thigh pretty much. And he's like, yeah, I won, I won. And the, the ref turned his back away from him and Riley jumped in the ring and grabbed his arm and threw it up in the air, which exposed the belt. And then the ref turned around. And it's like, they, at that point, he decides to reverse the decision to a disqualification. And it's like, um, okay, you just saw him, you were, you declared him the winner, you didn't see anything fishy, and then you see another guy standing in the ring with the belt after the match is already over, and now you're going to say, hey, wait a minute. That's not the way to do it. Yeah, it was, it was very weak. Very, very weak. I mean, you, you talk about, you know, making your uh, referees look uh, dopey, and then the heat kind of shifts from the heel onto the ref. It's like... I, I blame the booking for that one. That that was just a shitty way to end the match because it's like, yeah, okay, Alex Riley could have jumped in the ring with the belt at that point. What are you fucking doing? It's a dusty finish. It's the oldest trick in the book, and all it does is piss people off. These but days. the fact of the matter is, usually that that would happen to a face, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, well, if it happened to a face, it'd be the heel would do the heel would do it, and then uh, be smart enough to get the belt away at a time. So it's like, hey, I just got cheated. This fucking sucks. Yeah, but um, and what what, like probably again like not seen his fault, just like the char- the way the character is booked, he basically gets the fuck up after after they announce the disqualification as if nothing had had ever harmed him, him ever, and clotheslines Miz and Riley and give, gives Miz the attitude adjustment. Dun 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 dun. dun. It's it's just like in in my opinion, kind of salt on the wound that like. Wow, Miz, through th- even though she threw shenanigans, got his title back. Oh no, wait, no, he didn't. Oh, and Cena gets up and basically pisses on him. But, I mean, it would have been stupid booking to give the Miz the title back that fast. Uh, regard, I mean, it would have been stupid booking to give him the uh, belt back that fast. But at the same time, you could have just like, okay, Miz gets really close with his wrestling skills and just comes up short, and Cena beats him. There, simple finish. I just saved you five minutes of awful programming. Well, uh, a few more throwaway segments. We we have Tyler Perry wishing The Rock a birthday, a happy birthday, which... Fuck you, not. Tyler Perry! Fuck uh, you! I hate you and everything you stand for! You're not on this episode. Stay out. Uh, I, I got no thoughts on that. Moving on. I, I think I think we know what the next episode of Faker Than Real Life is going to be. <laughs> or <wrestling. laughs> All right, but, so... Um, um, Let's just skip ahead to our next part, which is um, Rey Mysterio and Kofi Kingston versus Drew McIntyre and Jack Swagger with Alberto Del Rio on commentary. And am I the only one who thinks it's weird that we're starting back up the Del Rio Mysterio feud again? I mean, shouldn't he be going for the title? It's on Raw, so it's an instant reboot. Essentially, I I think it's a fair way to build him up because Del Rio is basically kind of scrambling – in the sense that his destiny wasn't fulfilled for winning the World Heavyweight Championship, 
And so now he, he's he's on Raw. He's going to win the, the bigger title, whether or not they, they actually want to go out and say it's the bigger title. But he has to get through people, people such as Mysterio, who, although he took out, like, eventually triumphed and, and, and came back. And he's really pissed that Mysterio is here because he's going to be a huge inconvenience. So it, it, it for Del Rio's kind of character, I'd say that it's just – He's pissed at him as a roadblock, and so so they have a feud just based on that. Like starting at square one again. Yeah. Yeah, it's on Raw, so now it's rebooted. Oh, it and happened on SmackDown. And besides, that Christian's count. the champion on SmackDown. That's all you need to know that, that SmackDown is non-canon. Yeah, somewhat. Yeah, so. But uh, nonetheless, I, I thought that, if anything, uh, Drew McIntyre did <laughs> – he actually kind of r- rose to the occasion for this. This was a decent he's, match. I liked yeah. it. He's not a bad performer. It's just like his character is not interesting at all. That and he's Henry, kind of a pain in the ass backstage. Like, um, God, what was it? The Elimination Chamber. He kicked ass at that match, and then he had good uh, yeah. match with yeah. GTS. Yeah, really and, nice. uh, he always, I think he had, he had some good matches with Kofi Kingston for the Intercontinental Championship when that was going on. Well, is is he the pain in the ass backstage, or is that his wife? I don't know. I, I, I've just heard. Like, it's basically well known that he's very high ma- maintenance backstage. Oh, uh, okay. Dirt sheet rumor. Well, that's why they kind of aborted his push at WrestleMania 26 when he was supposed to win Money in the Bank, and we all know what happened there. Oh, yeah. But no need to get into that again. Oh, yeah, we've heard, we heard that plenty of times. Many people. times. But uh, the match basically finishes with Kofi hitting a trouble in paradise on Drew and Ray hitting a diving splash to him, despite Del Rio trying to interrupt him, just by standing on the table. <laughs> Look Either at me, way, I'm waving my arms. Distraction. We, we get the customary feud tease after the match is over. And and uh, they they kind of pimp this anti-bullying campaign. Be a star. The next segment. Oh yeah, BS. That's what it's called. They they have people like the the such stars as the the girl from the chaperone. But nah, I, I shouldn't. I should give him a little bit more credit. Alyssa Milano's there and some other people. That, that I said celebrities. Oh, yeah, not oh, not oh crap. Uh, the credit that I proposed I was going to give him is now rescinded. Yeah, it's still a better campaign than uh, eliminate the hate. It, I think it's because like you know well, they, TNA they, TNA gave up. They quit while they weren't ahead. Well, you, I feel as though it's like TNA. They did it for disingenuous reasons. They took uh, this horrible thing that was happening that in the country, and they're like, we're going to do our own Lemonade the Hate campaign because we got a gay guy, and we're going to jump on that bag web. And WWE, I can believe, that is more genuine about that because they have a lot of kids who are fans of them. They want their kid, they want their fans to be taken did, care of. Did you, did you just say bab wagon or bag wagon? Bandwagon. I thought you said, like, bag wagon. No, I probably said it fast and mumbled, so it sounded like that. Okay. Oh, well. A uh, few more birthday wishes. Uh, Ludacris. Yeah. You know. You remember yeah. Ludacris, guys? I do. So do I, but... Uh, Isn't Ludacris up. also in Fast Five, though? Yeah, he yeah. is. Pending! I uh, thought he was in the other shitty Fast and the Furious movie. He's in this yeah, one, too. Yeah, was. They bought him back. He was yeah. in two Fast and Furious. Why? They bring back the Asian girl. And he had that, that he tempted with his that song, uh, Move Bitch, Get Out of the Way. Because that's PG. Yep. Yeah, well, it's not like he, he was, he said anything like that, but. Yeah, but anyway, we go we go to commercial and they come back. And uh, did you know that SmackDown after 9-11 was the first major public gathering? Did you know we don't give, give a rat that's on the back, WWE. If you haven't already done it enough. It's like they're celebrating America, and then this one's just like, like Chris said, uh, Let's pat myself. Let's pat ourselves on the back. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. It's whatever, whatever good it makes you look like you you were like good vibes you were generating. You just suck away with that kind of thing. You know. Mm. Anyway, moving on. Like the the next segment for me would be I consider it the good, the bad, and the ugly. If not for the fact that uh, that what happened, what would happen on SmackDown in a few moments that we'll get to, but. But nonetheless, for me, it's the it's the hilarious, funny aneurysm moment, the bad and the ugly. Christian comes in the room, and The Rock basically says... Whoa, 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 says, you skipped the most important part of Raw this week. Dan Marino wished The Rock a happy birthday. I yes! I might have that. 
What the hell is wrong with you? I may have mumbled that before. Dan Marino. <laughs> Fucking Ladies dope. and gentlemen, the Dan Marino. Yeah, that's all we got. <coughs> Christian, uh, he, he comes to wish Brock a happy birthday. The Rock says, he's, I'm proud of you, Christian. <laughs> uh, Evan Bourne has a word with uh, Rocky before... Like, I, I didn't even remember that. I don't think it was really anything major, and don't think it would have done anything for Bourne, but nope. Vicky, Vicky comes in, and she's like, oh, I, I've got a gift for, for you for your birthday. I know how much you like pie, and they have this huge cake to reveal what everyone was expecting, Mae Young, and that's not the ugly. Um, But The Rock basically yeah. spins it this way. He, he says, like, Vicky's laughing all the while while Mae Young is in this, like, this sparkling, like, cocktail dr- or whatever the hell it is, and the Rock is like bathing suit. Yeah. The Rock is says, "What, what are you laughing at, Vicky? You could you could lose all the weight you wanted. You'd never be as beautiful as May Young." <laughs> and uh, he give, he gives her he gives May Young a kiss, and to the to the delight of everyone at home watching. It was and, heartwarming. Uh, <laughs> and for the ugly, jo- John Cena comes and he's like, "I got you a gift, Rocky." I'm the WWE Championship, and I'll hold on to it until WrestleMania. Cue mo- maniacal laughter. <laughs> you, you know the you know the thing that just pisses me off about this. He's probably that's probably true. I they have had him hold the title for more than a year before. Well, they they have, but I don't think they're going to do it again at this point. Is correct? I do, I do. I I I, I'm, I I might just be telling myself that, but I think that they're going to. They got Make way too much traffic. talent that's Make ready to go over in the next year, sitting right beneath him. To... It will be more since time soon. It will be. Uh, yeah, we can to... keep telling ourselves that all we want. Scene is not I mean, dropping the, the, the belt. The Miz ain't going anywhere. Morrison's ready for it. They look like they're trying to set Truth up to be ready for it, of all things. Um, Alberto Del Rio's ready for it. God, who else? If if nothing else, like if if there really would be a belt feud between our Truth and John Morrison, then. Truth would pick it up. John Cena would would get nabbed from his his rematch. Uh, Morrison would then have it, and if that's a, if it's at that point in the elimination chamber, then Cena's essentially just going to win that, like he did this year. Yeah. Uh, just a kind of broad stroke prediction. But uh, we we go to the which is I believe the last match of the night. Bef- yes, before this I- is technically our main event. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I Damn it! Uh, beforehand, we get George Lopez, but uh, uh, but Kane versus Mason Ryan with with CM Punk. Name two people uh, I do, name two people I don't want to see in a match uh, with one person I like. Yeah, who is awesome? Who is conspicuous by his the absence of his uh, wrist tape with the X's? Instead, wearing sleeves to cover up his tattoos. Kind of odd, but all right. It was anyway. a cold night. <laughs> no, I get the feeling that like, somebody told him backstage, you have to cover up your tattoos tonight for some reason or another. I just know that's what happened. Well, the thing about it is, they, they the match, no one may have wanted it, but what they're doing with Mason right they're making him look stronger than the new new Nexus. Pretty much what they're trying to do with, with Zeke in the core. Like they're they're having a break away. I I hope it's just a tag team because I don't I don't want to see any either of those dominate singles competition. No, they they should not. Definitely not. Um, hmm. Especially if they're reaching out to Batiste to get to get him to come back. Like I've seen reports for. It. Oh fuck him. Um. Anyway, the match goes on and on and on and on and on, and then Punk interferes and uh, the ref disqualifies Mason. And uh, Kane wins. So, um, yeah, pretty much. The match was not bad at all. I mean, Mason Ryan looks strong. Kane, you know, is typical Kane, which is not a bad thing. And uh, disqualification match just to set up for uh, the rest of the Nexus to jump in there and be like, you know, hey, let's let's beat up Kane some more and um, show to run out to try and make the save and. Ryan pretty much just abandons him and just walks away. Yeah. Well, 
pulls the old Bruce Banner thing and just starts walking up the ramp. Yeah, we're we're gonna gloss over the, the rest of these segments. Birthday wishes, Regis Philbin, Philbin, Kelly Ripa, uh, Craig Ferguson, who who I have nothing against. Wait, hey, Craig Ferguson. Yeah. Yeah. Craig Ferguson's awesome. It's a skeleton riding a motorcycle. Who would want to see Ghost Rider? Yeah, I love <laughs> this shit with the little alligator puppet. Did you ever see him? Remember he was on Freakazoid and he was the Scotsman? Yeah. That was cool. Anyway, anyway we got to stick to wrestling here and Olaf is going to kill us because we're eating up his, like, I don't know, ram or something. Right. But yeah. unfortunately, there is no more wrestling on Raw. Yep, nope, nothing. The rest of it is just more of The Rock's massive The, the, Rock, the Rock comes out to make a uh, another speech, thanks his family, thanks his fans, thanks his friends. Um, and uh, all of a sudden, no chance hits, and Vince McMahon comes out and uh, basically sucks The Rock's cock some for him. And um, thanks him for coming back. And then we get a nice little video package uh, highlighting The Rock over the course of his career. And uh, one last celebrity. Who is it going to be? Why, it's Maya, everyone. Who, Holy who's shit, Maya. Such pertinence to the WWE and F and The Rock. and Because she'll do anything for a buck, including give Carson Daly a lap dance. I'm sorry to... Uh, I'm not trying to kill the bit, but who the fuck's Maya? Yeah, She's exactly. I'm not even being funny. I have no clue who she is. I'm not either. Exactly. I, I forgot what her songs she's a were, but singer. You remember? Nope. Uh, you remember uh, Ghetto Superstar? Oh yeah. Oh, she so like was the one that made it. that piece of ass. Oh god, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Oh, I actually, and she, I actually and she was in uh, Moulin. And she was in Moulin Rouge too. Oh yeah, that. Oh yeah. crap. Well, actually, I like the Moulin Rouge song, not her, but no, I, I don't. It's a it's a bad cover of a, of a song that wasn't really that great to begin with. Hey, Pink Which dressed up like a whore. Thing. It was cool. Pink. You are I could care less. She's... Right. You are so strange. But the, yeah. actually, one funny thing about Vince's promo was that the crowd was chanting what, like oblivious to the fact that this is not a, a kayfabe kind of thing, and he's he's like, I'd like to thank The Rock for giving the crowd the opportunity to say what. That and... is not because of The Rock. No. Moving on to SmackDown. Hey, oh, boy. SmackDown. Let no, the disappointment I, begin. This episode. No, it wasn't. No, it was a oh. happy episode. Christian's champion, so you shut your goddamn mouth. Uh, no, um, for, forget it. We'll get. We'll fucking discuss that. We'll discuss why it's shit. But nonetheless, I thought that this was a good episode of SmackDown because it indicated that SmackDown is returning to form. Like it's becoming the the just like three, uh, three four decent decent matches. Yeah, was, there were some good innings though. They got Sin versus uh, Tyson Kidd. Yeah, I'm sorry, lover, I still can't take hate that the, uh, uh, lover, seriously. Lover hate the uh, finish to the uh, main event. This had some damn good matches on it. I was not at all disappointed. Yeah, but we'll get to the main event later. Uh, yeah, SmackDown itself was good. It's just, yeah, well, we know what disappointed us, but we'll get to it. Anyways, we start the night off with a video package about Christian and his dream to become. Uh, world champion and uh, basically let let the celebration we actually give a shit about co- begin yeah uh, even, even, even though michael even though michael Cole's did i say michael pole oh, that must have been a Freudian same thing story. but uh, either, yeah. either way he, he's like oh his friend edge had to interrupt he shouldn't be champion no disqualification and all he did was on horn <laughs> and if Michael Cole didn't want uh, Christian to get the belt, he should have got his lazy ass out of the coal mine and did something about it. Yeah, he's a wrestler now. He's undefeated. But nevertheless, Christian cuts a great promo, for, starting off by saying he's been waiting 17 years to do this, holds the belt up high, uh, and says he, he's he, he's thought of this scenario for years. Like, he's had dreams of it. Like, what he do you do? What do you say when the situation came around? But, he, but that does not compare to how he feels in in reality right now it makes it so much worse he's enjoying every single se- second of this this uh celebration he basically gave, he, uh, he basically gave a uh, Rey Mysterio world champion speech yeah and we all know what happened to Rey Mysterio 
Dun, dun, dun. The difference is that couldn't have happened soon enough. But either way, he said th- this title's not only for Edge, but it's for you, peeps. Belongs to everyone. And it's you could, you, looking into the crowd, you saw like Christian signs. And when he entered, they got he had a really good pop. People were stoked about this man. Oh, yeah. They had signs that say "Peeps, Christian World Champion, finally." Uh, pretty blonde girl in the front, just like yay! It was awesome. They it meant something to them. But yeah, he he dedicates the belt to the crowd. At which point, Mark Henry interrupts, and he comes out with his heel grin, or his face grin, or his heel grin, or his face grin, and uh, he he basically says, "Congratulations, Christian." You know what? I I will be honest with you. On Sunday, I wanted you to win because I'm a big motherfucker. You're a small little puny motherfucker, and it's 1991 in the WWF, and I'm gonna I'm definitely getting this title. Yeah. It's not 1991 in the WWF, Mark Henry. You're not getting this title. <laughs> well, actually, like, I mean, they're they may want to, but. And then we have another freak show uh, come now out. Back then, uh, Christian would still have a better chance of getting a title just because of his complexion. Well, anyway, um, yeah, Mike, Mark Henry comes out and he's like saying, I'm big, you're small, that world title is mine. Ah! And a uh, great colleague comes out and says, uh, I'm big, you're small, that world title is mine. Ah! And turns to Mark Henry and goes, Rah! Then Randy Orton comes out and says, I'm not that big, but that world title is mine. And then Teddy Long comes out, and uh, Teddy Long comes out, he forgot his keys, heads to the ring, and he's like, now we're going to let the fans decide. And it goes about what do you expect. Yeah, or, or to get the title shot. Obvious. Thanks a lot, Vince. I mean, Jesus Christ, Taboo Tuesday wasn't as blatant as, uh, enough for you. Uh, you could have a cage match or a debate or a toothbrushing contest. <laughs> uh, We're all very sorry for No Leaf's loss. He he went to or was it Cyber Sunday? And it ends how you would suspect expect it. Because no one's ever wanted to see Mark Henry win a title, and, and I don't know if I was in that crowd, I would have cheered for Mark Henry just to be an asshole like that. Well, Mar- I cheer I'll for cheer. Kali. I cheer for Kali to bug people, but I would actually, if it was a different situation, I'd cheer for Mark Henry just because I like that dude. If I was in the front row, I'd have yelled really loudly after the crowd died down, like, only if Kali wears the fairy outfit. <laughs> <laughs> now let's, uh, let's not. Yeah, but, I mean, such a, like, blatant telegraphing what we want you to, like, giving, saying, okay, here's your choice, but we're going to guide you to the choice we want. It's like, you know, your mom saying, okay, you can go to your friend's house and wear this little pink dress, or you can stay home and eat your vegetables. Mm. Uh, Sure, you can have that comic book if you let me pull your fingernails out with pliers. uh, Or you can get this classic by Ernest Hemingway. So, yeah, pretty much that kind of thing. Um, what the Andy fuck? Put the slinky down, Backlash. You guys never let me have any fun. <laughs> <laughs> I thought my mic was muted. <laughs> guys, the boring show is over. We're talking about a show that was actually good this week. And <laughs> whistling and laughing like Revenge of the Nerds and playing with slinkies running around. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> Ah, God damn! <laughs> and now we got my echo going on Magpie's computer again. Sorry, ah, I didn't do anything. Being... Can we get some professionalism, please, gentlemen? God, thank you. Man. By the so, by the way, can you can you hear me, guys? Now because. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. And for the third Good, time, we need to figure out where the fuck we were. In like Sky, <laughs> Skype's going very slow, but no, I, I know exactly where we were. Um, at this point, uh, he sets up the match for, for the w, for the World Heavyweight Championship. It's very abrupt. Uh, we, we get the uh, Christian 
probably has has a look on his face that that it's uh, way too soon, but nonetheless he accepts. Like he yep. he's 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 going to be a fighting champion. Uh, the match is tonight. As if you can't over. tell who's going to win, you just got to look at who has more facial hair. Mm. You got to look at the person who who's uh, better than Kurt Angle at this oh, stage. Yeah, that, for, yeah. if, if he uses uh, the Orton slam, Christian's doomed. Or, or the the Orton lock. Uh, or he he takes out his Orton mouthpiece, or pulls down his Orton straps. But either way, uh, or if he has, the, or if he has gold medals for the Orton Olympics, <laughs> or Olympics. Either way, uh, after the commercial, we have a backstage segment with uh, Ranjin and Kali, who are joined by Jinder Mahal. And uh, the, if, if for those who don't know, he's basically someone in the FCW who they originally had like a literally like a turban on the guy. But but now I think they're just viewing him as, as some kind of like preeminent like Indian star or something. I, I forgot. Yeah, he, he's just a big shot from India. Yeah. What is he going to bust down a Bollywood number in one of these segments one day? That'd be fucking badass, but I doubt it. They can get Molina to dance in the background. That'd be pretty cool. Anyways, we'll all see. that happens with this uh, segment is that they're kind of setting up that uh, Kali is going to be managed by gender eventually, and nobody gives a flying fuck. No, it's actually <laughs> it's actually not going in that direction. Well, it's going in some direction. It's uh, he's gonna like give Kali shit for being soft since he's turned face and everything. And Kali's gonna turn monster heel and be a tag team with him. Ah. Oh God. Man, is the tag team division just going to be composed of of huge fucking people, Ryan and and uh, Jackson and Show and Kane and Kali and Jinder Mahal, who's not really that big, but it's WWE yeah. throwbacks, man, you got the monsters there. Yeah, WWE '91, like I said. So I guess the next team is going to be Mark Henry and uh, who else is there? K- Karma, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, so I'd like to see that. That. that could happen. That'd be fucking funny. Well, actually, someone once suggested. Like when the news broke that Kong signed a contract with WWE, that basically photoshopped an image of her from TNA with with yellow polka dots all, all over and and the word Cody, that that would be kind of wrong and kind of underutilizing Kong, but it was pretty funny. I would I would honestly put um, I, would, I would sign Viscera back up again and put the three yeah. of them together. Him and, him and his eight tits. Yeah. But no. Uh, but put put. put uh, him, Karma, and Mark Henry together and be like, and together we have 12 tits. <laughs> coming off, coming off, at, we, we, we recap the U.S. title match between Kofi and Sheamus with uh, Kofi doing his boom drop and, reti- and getting the title. Do this match with a straight face, I dare you, Chris. What do you mean with a straight face? This match was awesome. 12 was tits. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so uh, the next match is Brian Danielson versus uh, Sheamus, and like all the matches I've seen, well, except for that one I didn't get to see at WrestleMania, all the matches Brian Danielson and Sheamus have has always that been pretty good. Yeah, this, was this one was a keeper. Uh, or, I mean... It was like, an instant classic, but it was a good, solid match. I'd be like, hey, I'd be proud to be in that match. These these two always have solid matches with each other, but at this point it's kind of like, uh, we're running out of like, things to do, they, they, fans. They definitely play up the whole. They they play up the large and small kind of dynamic very well. Uh, like Daniel Bryan like, being the, the 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 plucky kind of underdog who who always who always well not always gets by. And actually, wait, Sheamus has won every one of his matches, hasn't he? But, well, what I like to see is if they get um like since Danielson's on SmackDown and he lost the uh, U.S. title, they start having him pepper in new moves. Like, he starts to use the rear naked choke as a finisher. He gets more submissive, and he peppers in new stuff, so he's still interesting. Or he puts Sheamus in a triangle choke. That'd be pretty badass. So that'll, using- that'll have to wait for, like, the pay-per-views, because, like, if you notice, Daniel Bryan's been kind of wrestling beyond, like, a few spots, and one's in this match, certainly. He's been wrestling to formula. Like, he does his he does his kicks. He does his uh, suicide dive. He does his missile drop kick. He does this and that. But he, he was able to work some good things in this match. Like, for instance... Well, yeah, Danielson's always been good quality, and he does the formula, like you said, but it'd be cool to see if they add new things that formula, like a rear naked choke... Or triangle choke for pay per views, or he's uh, definitely gonna have to have some kind of importance before he's able to like just like really uh, reinvent his repertoire like he was doing during his title run in, in ROH. But 
What they should do is have him feud, uh, like eventually have him feud with Barrett. That would be pretty badass for the IC belt. Yeah, I, I. They might go that route. They might go that because, like, the way Morrison was feuding with Sheamus for the number one contendership, I wouldn't be surprised if they have that. Yeah, and it's cool. You can have a story like, "Hey, you were on NXT and you stole all the thunder," and then Barrett's like, "Well, you're a pussy who got a, out of the group." But uh, we, it was it was nonetheless a well paced match, and again, like I said, a return to SmackDown form. One of the some of the memorable spots were were when Sheamus attempted his his very nice slingshot shoulder block. Brian like anticipated him and caught him in the label lock, though too close to the to the rope. It was it was a good counter. It, it put him it put uh, Daniel Bryan over well. And for the finish, it like Sheamus was on the outside. Daniel Bryan was about to attempt a, a suicide dive, but Sheamus counters with a I I can't I forgot whether this was a boot or a, or an actual bro kick. Whatever he did, he kicked the shit out of him. But yeah, he, he countered him and. And came in for for what was a bro kick. What was definitely a bro kick for for the three count, ten minute match. Yeah, good quality. Nothing else to say about it, um, except for we've seen the combination of those two work together. So it'd be good to see. Uh, the only thing I would have to criticize is like let's get these guys against different opponents. Like uh, that's my only complaint about the match. But um. Oh yeah, and af- after the match, Sheamus is basically basically looks at uh, he looks down at the Daniel Bryan dumbfounded, like he was like, "Wow, that that took a lot." Um, though he also says SmackDown belongs to him. Kind of funny, being that he's he has no aspirations for the World Heavyweight Championship, even though he is a world title previous world title holder. Yeah, pushing him like, worked so well. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, he was good as a transitional champion, but his his reigns weren't much much better than that. It's one of those things where when they gave him the belt, he wasn't that good as he is now. If they would have given him the belt, like after he improved and had the serious matches with Danielson and just like worked on his craft and he improved because he really did improve, they give him the belt. Then I have I wouldn't say jack shit about that because it's like, oh, he's a good champion. He's a solid monster, unique look, different guy. He's good at what he does. Put it get the belt on him. But now it's like. They brushed him so fast when he won the belt. There's nothing else he can do. Yeah, he can get a world heavyweight title belt, but he's gonna feel uh, it's boring now because it's like we've seen him with a championship belt. There's nothing really else he can do unless reinvent him. And then the Celtic thing just put him down even lower. But so far, he's building himself back up. Anyways, um, I think that's all we have to say on this because let's move on to a Cody Rhodes segment. Cuts another one of his good promos. Uh, I mean, it's it's good to hear, but it's also clear that the creative doesn't really know what to do with him right now. They're they're probably kicking around ideas while he just talks about the fallout w- with his feud uh, with Ray. I'm telling people that they're as ugly as him, so they should wear masks too. Yeah, Actually, still, that'd be cool to get I'm, him and Daniels in the feud. If I was in that crowd, I would have put one of those bags on just for fun. Dude, I would I would <laughs> go and have like a whole section of people wearing those bags and just you know do pogo. <laughs> when he comes those, out, those bags are missing something though. They need a smiley face on the front. No, just as as they are. Just that's awesome. Just like a whole section of paper bag, people just jumping up and down randomly. <laughs> he just walks by, like stares, like what the fuck. You got. You can't tell me that wouldn't be awesome. I'd watch it. Hell, I'd do it if we decided to go to a live show. I just don't know where to get that many paper grocery bags anymore. Ever I go use plastic. Yeah, I think yeah. if we tried to use the plastic, it wouldn't end well. No. We can still try, though. <laughs> I'm uh, game if you're game. This week in the news, a couple of wrestling fans suffocated near the front row when trying to attempt a joke. Uh, this Cody Rhodes figure, is he a menace to society? He's teaching our young children to put bags on their heads. Wait, weren't the people who are killed, like, in their 20s? Shut up! That's not the point. Anyway, uh, moving on. Match number two! Zeke versus Big Show, in which they they put Zeke over even more than they put Mason Ryan over last night. (laughs) Oh, Jesus Christ. On Raw, rather. Like, if Big Show ever wanted to feel like a jobber, this was it. 
<laughs> yeah. They he got in so much offense, Ezekiel Jack. Oh like all those lines and kicks and even like rest holds. The show didn't even really get to do much. I mean, and they, uh just to start the match, like just to put this in perspective, they locked up and Jackson pushed show away. Well, I guess they're trying to say even though the big show is big, the J- Jackson's big and muscular. Yeah. Here's my question though, where is this going? Are they are they like trying to build up a possible team up between Mason Ryan and Ezekiel Jackson? No. Far worse, a match between the two. It's like, oh, the core, he's our best guy against your best guy, even though they're breaking up, but you get the idea. Well, eventually he those two in the ring together. In some way, shape, or form, yeah. But hey, um, we got Lashley and Batista. We'll get this. <laughs> this is just going to be that match part two. <laughs> I mean, the, the finish for, for this was when uh, Slater tries to distract Show. Kane pulls him off and knocks him to the floor, uppercuts Gabriel. But when Show comes into the ring, Jack, Ezekiel Jackson basically gives him a big boot and clotheslines him, three count. Which. I mean, they just finished as a clothesline on Big Show, no less. CM Punk couldn't do shit about that last year, but Zeke, Big Boot clothesline. Yep. That's all it does. Now your voice is quite low, Tifus. That's because I'm picking my nose. Okay. That's charming. <laughs> Anyways. Matt. Uh, so yeah, uh, Zeke wins, and the core tries to congratulate him, but he's just like, fuck you guys, and walks away. So, uh, anything else to say about this? Because no. I can't think of anything. Okay, so uh, then we get the Raw recap. Nobody cares. And it's time for our third match. It's Layla versus Alicia Fox. Part of the show everyone wanted to see. Yay. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the, one of the other parts, like, th- this was second to, to the main event finish, but Layla essentially tosses Alicia Fox away. She she does that really grisly looking layout finish which is a neck breaker, but the way the receiver sells it is just like they, they just look contorted. That's just uh, the key. Yeah. And uh after that karma comes out I remember like what the fuck when I saw that. Yeah. But uh nonetheless, after the match karma comes out as she did on Monday, except Layla's smart. She exits the ring as quick as possible. And thousands of people are like, hurry up, guys, we don't have a commercial break before the bathroom breaks over anymore. <laughs> but, um, basically, they, they did it, uh, like, like they would, they would have, like, any kind of other diva fuck, or any other kind of knockout fuck with Kong when she was in DNA, where they, where she's, like, not looking, Alicia hits her in the back, and then <laughs> Karma just, just turns around slowly with a serious look, and then, uh, mis- uh awfully mischievous grin. <laughs> And just pummels that uncoordinated idiot. Yeah, she she's just going to completely... She's basically telling Alicia Fox, I'm going to eat you. Alicia tries to kick her. She grabs her leg. And, and this this is the something... A bit of a controversy, at least in the forums, was Karma clotheslines Alicia Fox down, and she lands on her side with a conspicuous pop. Her shoulder separates. Uh, looking at the footage, it didn't... It, just seemed like a, a bad accident where where if you look at karma she didn't she wasn't stiff she like you could see her her go quickly and then push alicia down with her with her with like her arm i don't really think it was any anyone's fault like if you could quote unquote i blame call, alicia eh. uh, i don't know i, I think, blame alicia i don't think she had time to react like i, I, I think her. it was it's all her but in fault. wrestling you got to if you if it's a How dare like, you say karma might be partially to blame for this and Adelaide is not so sucky that she's completely to blame for this. How dare it's one you of those sir. things where it's <laughs> one of those things where if karma's coming out and the obvious plan is okay, Fox, Layla, uh roll around for a second and then karma's going to come out and beat the shit out of you, Fox. You should know that you're going to have to take something and be prepared to take it. And in wrestling you have to be prepared to take some things that come out of nowhere too. I mean, accidents happen, but... At, at, the, at the same time, though, I mean, it, it is just an accident. I mean, people need to just, you know, relax about it and not be like, oh, my God, that's the end of Karma's career, you know. Yeah. Or, oh, my I mean, God, Alicia Fox still, so bad she can't even take a Still, backstage may not have the same perspective. It, it may reflect Jesus. poorly on her. I mean, it was just because she was involved with that, like. But then again, first, we're, we're not that. So we don't. I, 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 I just, I just think people need to relax before they sit there and try to like go all instant doom, gloom, 
worst case scenario on whoever they're trying to place blame on or saying is going to get blamed. Well, I, I think it's it's just because it's Alicia Fox. I don't think uh, WWE is going to be like all rage mode, and it's a separated shoulder. I mean, it's not like a serious injury. She'll probably be out for a yeah. month, but yeah. That's and at least, it, and I'm not wishing injury on anybody, but Alicia Fox getting injured compared to like if Natty got injured, I'd be pissed off because like there goes quality. But Alicia, it's like I feel oh. bad, but technically, and I know this is going to sound fucked up, but she's expendable talent wise. That is fucked. Up. I mean, yeah, that, yeah, that is cold. Like, and uh, it's cold. Although, but if I, I want to, I agree with you to an extent. I wouldn't. Dude, that that, that that was Matt Hardy cold. Okay, that Matt was Hardy blood. cold. <laughs> if I want to be Matt Hardy cold, I just say I wouldn't talk through the entire nonetheless, episode. Nonetheless, like though, it, it was a yeah. it was a cringeworthy moment when when Karma did the implant buster, just like yeah, the double under. And, 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 and you could like, just uh, hear her screaming while she was up in that thing. You knew that hurt like a bitch. Yeah. And, and the fans were just like, one more time, one more time, you, one you could, more you time. See, you could see the side of the shoulder that got, uh, took the impact earlier. It definitely did not look like it was put together anymore. That shoulder blade was floating. Mm. It's just not right. Oh, God, hopefully none of you are eating. But either way, uh, yeah, Layla watches all this happen, but from a much better vantage point of uh, the ramp. Safer, too. Getting further and further away all the time. But we we move from, from there to, to, after a commercial, to a backstage segment with uh, between Ezekiel Jackson and the rest of the core. Where uh, <laughs> Barrett says, like, I want you to look at me, Jackson. Explain yourself. And before, before uh, he could follow orders, Jackson just tries to close on him, but Barrett and the rest of the core all give him a beat down. And the, the funny thing about this was that after all was said and done, like Heath Slater yells something. I forgot exactly what it was, but it just, <laughs> Oh God. He, he, that guy just is not able to put himself over. Is he? <laughs> well, the, the funny thing is Jackson's the one who hit first. No. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, he, he's the one who started the beat down. So I, I don't really have much sympathy for him. Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, they, they were just trying to spin it in the way that that uh, the rest of the core were probably going to do something if he had not. It's like a like a hot shot first kind of thing, I guess. Uh, <laughs> not, not uh, <laughs> then go ahead and let them do it first, you know. Either way, uh, oh, you mean just from a from a booking perspective? Yeah. All right. Uh, I, but, I guess it depends on if they're trying to actually turn them, uh, him and Brian face or not. Um, which well, I, I honestly don't see them doing successfully, but at the same time, it's just like, um, if you're trying to, like, I don't, I don't know what the message was here. Is it try, like they're trying to uh, turn him face, or is it just trying to show that he's out of the group? Depending on what result you're going for, I guess that's what really makes it break, whether or not it was important to have him hit first or have Wade Barrett hit first. Yeah, that, that, that's all I'm saying. And at the end of the promo, Barrett looks down at Jackson and says, it was a pleasure working with you. And they walk off. Yep. They, they recap that after the commercial is over. I hate it when they do that. Yeah. Um, unless it's something particularly impactful, like, say, Cena losing the title or what. Oh, wait. But, uh, uh, th- this was particularly nasty just because they did throw a lot of shit on him. Hmm. Like, they just hit him with a whole bunch of crazy shit, like the towel rack. The, the towel rag, wagon thing. Oh, yeah, this huge, huge tent, which probably hollow as fuck, and Jackson could take it, but nonetheless, it looked good. Yeah, it looked great. Um, but going on to the next match. Oh, uh, yes, the next match. Uh, well, Another first, good one. Yeah, first it starts with uh, Chavo Guerrero coming out to join uh, Josh and Booker on commentary. Yay. And yeah, the match Booker itself. T. Yeah, the match itself is Sin Cara versus Tyson eye job to a midget kid. <laughs> So uh, he's got something in common with Chavo, I guess. He's got something in common with a lot of people that are no longer employed at the WWE, too. And say what you will about uh, Tyson Kidd, but he was definitely the right person at, for, for Sin Cara to shine. See, Tyson and, Kidd's uh, a great wrestler. It's just the predicament of the book. Is this predicament he's in and the people booking him? It's the like Royal Rumble. Ability. The Royal Rumble fucking killed his career. And it sucks because Tyson's talented. Anyway, it's getting into this match. Um, 
they they have a pretty solid match. I mean, it's got a, got some very good spots in it, and uh, and Tyson didn't look like a complete. Uh, oh, I'm just here to do the moves and perform them. No, he actually like he got out of the way of the baseball slide. He pulled some moves off, and he I think he got a hammerlock on him in the start of the match. Yeah, uh, it's, it started with a hammerlock. Mm, right, but he didn't look like a pansy. Right, I mean, it was an even match. It was a good hard fought back and forth, and uh, no botches. That was the important thing. Yeah, definitely a better way to for for Sin Cara to endear himself. <laughs> Especially what? the top rope C4. Yeah, he, he he hit that in one. And the good, other good thing about this was that Chavo was on commentary throughout the entire thing. He he's, I want them to do something with him. I I like him. He, he's I a, think. Oh, he's go right ahead, Chris. Good promo cutter, and he's great in the ring. Like during the match, he was saying things like, "Yeah, Sin Cara, impressive stuff." Most of which I innovated anyway. Yeah. The thing the thing is though, like. Someone like Chavo Guerrero is perfect for uh, Sin Cara to feud with because, number one, he, despite not really having much of a career anymore, Chavo is still very dependable in the ring and can make anybody look good. Uh, and, and then if you remember his WCW career, he can really do those cruiserweight spots and knows how to work Sin Cara's style. Yeah, I mean, he well, he is a luchador. He knows how to work the luchador style, and he knows how to adapt that so. style into the WWE style so he can help teach Sin Cara over a long-term feud how to do that, and he's got the mic skill so he can cut the interviews for uh, Sin Cara, who doesn't speak English. And, and, and it, it and does no be one, good, And no one's, no one's going to complain about seeing uh, Chavo Guerrero on television. Definitely not. No. Um, and it's good, too, because like, hopefully this could lead to a good series of matches where we get to see Chavo look strong, and we get to see Sin Cara get over and, and, and at the end of it, when Shavo does ultimately have to job out and look like a bitch, not really much of anything is lost from that because it's yeah, Shavo. It could be worse. It could be fucking <laughs> Hornswoggle. <laughs> I mean, let's let's face it. I mean, Shavo's gotten really nothing to prove, but at the same time, he's got nothing to lose either. Yeah, so this will be good for him, and he gets to get to, he gets to work a style he hasn't really worked. Uh, Elite Libre style hasn't really worked heavily since the WCW days. I mean, yeah, there was like spots of it, like with the matches with Ray or Eddie in the WWE, but for, like full blown pass based style in a feud like that yeah. in a series of matches, this will be good, really good for him. So he could be like, "Oh, I'm going back, and I'm going back stronger, and I'm gonna be on TV. It could be great." It, it kind of makes you almost wonder why they didn't really push Shafa to begin with for like anticipating his return, his, his uh, Sin Cara coming. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think any of us can really understand WWE creative at this point anymore. But we'll get to the main event. <laughs> if, if, if you want to understand uh, WWE's creative, all you guys just do is start speaking the lines, you know. We move from there to a, a backstage segment between uh, Todd Grisham and Teddy Long, where Grisham asks Long if he says, hey, I don't think it's really fair for, for Christian to be in a main event right after he won his title. Like, what were you thinking? Or, well, not in such a subjective way, but, I mean, the guy's a broadcast journalist. But either way, Long says, well, it's what the fans want, player. They had a title match on Raw. I'm going to have a title match on SmackDown to make it unpredictable. Yeah, yeah that's unpredictable. There, too. Yes, unpredictable on a taped show. And basically just indicating that if you see it on Raw, you can expect to see the same thing on SmackDown five days later. Great. Well, holla. Hey, uh, I'm not going to holla. Well, uh, what what follows is a, a good match with a questionable finish, something that... This was a 25-minute we... long match. Yeah. Well, is... I don't know if it was completely 25 minutes because they padded it with about three commercial breaks. Yeah, but you get you get the point though. I mean, it was for being on weekly television show. This is a long match. I mean, most matches are lucky to meet the ten minute mark anymore. On I mean, yeah, there there is certainly like great psychology. Definitely right. early on when Randy Orton was underestimating Christian, like going for his like five moves, his like highlight spots. For instance, he he early on went for the. The rope hung uh, DDT, but Christian, he he blocks it and gives him a back body drop. It was a great, it was a good things. quality match. It's like that's not what we have a problem with. You know what though? Given the post match situation, 
I don't have that big of a problem with the uh, finish of the match either. Um, I I do huge problem. Disagree with that because if you didn't see it, basically it goes to Christian going off the top rope and getting an RKO. One two three. Randy Orton is your new world heavyweight champion. And all our hopes are dashed. But they they held on Christian for so long after that well, that you, you know that they're not done pushing him. Well, my well, problem if they with weren't it, done pushing him, why weren't they building this pay per view quality match to a pay per view? It, it's I like my problem is it reminds yeah, me of. Um, I'm not saying t- I agree with exactly how they did it, but I'm just saying over me, fine. at least they're <laughs> not you know jobbing him out right away. It, it's know. just like. Our, my problem with it is, it's like it was. It was just like that night when AJ Styles won the TNA World Heavyweight Title, and then Rob Van Dam shows up, and they have that entire night dedicating to punking out AJ, and then he loses the title on free TV. It's like the the it cheapens the value. It, okay, like the world title belt in the WWE has been treated like a prop for a long period of time, but now this just really cheapens it. It's like, oh, it's not hard to win. Anybody can do this. You just have to wait for a long period of time. So what? What what does it mean to be the champion? It doesn't mean shit. And then when you have somebody who like Christian who won the belt, we've been waiting for a long period of time, and you could have built him up to be strong. You take it away, and he just said fuck you to your fans who were in the audience at that night who was really stoked about it. I mean, I know the, I'm not a moron. I know why they gave it to Orton because they trust him to get him more ratings. But fucking still, you want to cheapen the value of your belt? Not not only that, but uh... I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna respond to that right now as saying. The fans are on their feet cheering their asses off at the fact that Orton won. So. Yeah, like I'm I, not saying they weren't happy, but there were a lot of people that get the finger. But, but don't say that's a big fuck you to them if they enjoyed it. A lot of people, it was a big fuck you to them. I mean, I'm stoked they enjoyed it, but for the most part, there's a lot of Christian fans there that night who was like, "God damn it!" And that shouldn't happen that fast. If anything, this should have been the first match. Christian should have won it, and then Orton RKO's him, he'll turn and then over the limit, then give him the fucking belt. Well, we'll actually know next week. Certainly, yes. like, if Christian has his rematch next week, not only that, and if it's any amount shorter than this one. Uh. Let, let me give you a theory. You know who I blame this? You know who I blame this whole thing on? I know, Magpie, you, you mentioned this earlier, but I blame TNA. Here's why. Think back to, like, 1997, 1998, when WWF and WCW were going head-to-head. I think it's well established by this point, Vince McMahon just hates the IWC. He hates us with a passion. And it has never been more obvious than given this week in wrestling. But, in 1997, he fucking needed us. He doesn't, he doesn't need us anymore, because you know what? In 1997, if he put on a bad show, it was like, okay, Vince, we're going to go watch WCW now. Have fun watching your ratings go down. Nowadays, Vince could put on a shitty show like this, I mean, pull shit like this, and he could say, oh, oh, oh you guys are going to walk away. Well, well, there's your, there's my competition. What you think about that? Oh, I'll see you next week. This is why we need, we need something else. We need Ring of Honor. We need uh, oh, fucking my- Dragon Gate. We need... No, no joke, dude. If Ring of Honor, If Ring of Honor had a TV deal right now... I'm not saying WWE be shaking their boots, but TNA wouldn't say jack shit. They'd be pissing their pants. That would be real competition to Vince in terms of like, and not competition, but an alternative. It would be presentable. It'd be well. Ugh. I mean, if it was on more prestigious and more available, accessible channel than HD. Yeah, then... if it was on like, uh, let's say the Turner Networks, or if it was on, um, uh, I'm I'm just throwing it. If it was on a TV channel that everyone can get to and have access to, that people know by name recognition. TNA would be pissing their pants right now, and it would be a good alternative to Vince, and you would get the wrestling fans back and excited to tune in on TVs. Would Vince be scared of it? No, he wouldn't, but it would be a presentable, good competition. Oh, go, sorry, no, uh, sorry, Backlash. Go right ahead. No, that, that's basically what I want to say, because actually, think back to Stone Cold Steve Austin back in 1998. Here's a guy who Vince really doesn't like, but is completely over with the crowd. And in 1998, at WrestleMania 14, he's he's pressured, basically, to to give uh, Austin a title run. And he did. What happened? Austin became basically the biggest moneymaker Vince ever had. And who knows? that? I'm not saying that would have happened again with Christian, but you never but know. It's a good example of listening to the fans and what they want. 
you can't always it's, give the fans exactly what they want. You have to bait them with some shit that they don't want. You have to bait them, but don't piss on your belt at the same time while doing it. All right, it you, know what, you know what? Look, you know what? They, they, you know what? Magpie, 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 what? Magpie, calm what? down. What? Calm down. It's just wrestling. Calm down. No, it's right. real to me, damn it. All right. Number one, you said the belt has been treated like a prop for years now. That's because it is a prop. It's always been a prop. It's a tool to help get people over. You shift it around between people that don't need it so that it gains credibility and between people that do need it so that they can get the credibility from having the belt. That's what happens with it. Um, with Christian, him just getting the belt at all is a fucking miracle. Um, even if it's a week long right now, the way they ended SmackDown tells you that they're not done pushing him. You know, he may not have another championship. Maybe he goes the way of, you know, Roddy Piper going the rest of his career without having the championship. Uh, and I agree with your, I agree with your uh, statement about it being, cause, okay, it, they've always been props. Belts have always been props. You're right about that. But it's how you treat and respect your belt. Like, you don't, there's, well, there's, uh, there's no such thing as disrespecting the belt. Yes, there is. Match. No, it's only if you have continuously short title reigns like that. All right. There is such a thing as disrespecting your no, belt. No, 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 because they have to do this. They have to do this every now and then where they have the belt change hands very quickly after it's already changed hands or change hands. Yeah, but we already had that with Ziggler. We already had that with Ziggler and uh, or, fucking or, Edge. Right, we need that want, again. Dude, Magpie, Magpie. What? You want to get pissy about me talking over you earlier? What? That Jesus. was one smart remark. I'm not was getting mad. Come but on, now man. I'm just getting really into the argument, but I'm not mad at you. Well, well, let me finish my statement before you cut me off. I'm sorry. I apologize. Go right ahead, to, buddy. To keep an element of unpredictability within this quote-unquote sport, they have to have the belt change hands shortly after it's already changed hands sometimes, and they have to change it on Raw or SmackDown sometimes just so it's that feel of anything can happen anytime. Okay? Uh, they have to I, do that. I, mm, uh, well, it, I, I, it sucks. It, I know it sucks that it, they did it to Christian – after all the buildup and all the mm-hmm. IWC wanting to have this belt for so long, but that's just the way it is. And you can tell by the end of the show, they're not done pushing him. They're not going to send him straight to superstars now or anything like that. Can I say and, something? This is going so, somewhere. And I agree with your assessment, dude. I mean, I'm not trying to disvalue your opinion or anything like that. And you brought up some good points. It's just I don't like it when they do things like this. No, I, mean, the, that's I get what you're saying, drama. and you present it really well, but it's just that's, that's it's part that's part of that's part of putting on a dramatic show. The fans aren't always going to like what they see. Well, yeah. something they do backlash or something. Sorry, here's the thing: you're saying they are going somewhere with this. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, yeah. It from the logical standpoint, it looks that way, but I have to be a pessimist here because I I, I feel like after having watched WWE for about. 13 years now, I've kind of gotten to know Vince. And he might just be screwing with us. He might be. Because we'll we'll know when we see SmackDown next week if Christian is going to still be around, if they job him out in a minute, or if he doesn't show up at all. Because what, they, what they've what they been talking about is wanting to give Mark Henry another title push. Because, you know, that's worked so well in the past. Yeah, they might do that too. I don't know, but I, all I know is, you know, he might not be competing for the title, but you can tell that Christian is going to have a huge, significant role on SmackDown. Is all I'm saying. I'm not saying he's going to be getting the title back next week or anything. I'm just saying he's going to have a significant role on SmackDown, just like the Miz is going to still have a significant role on Raw, even though he's not the champion. Just like John Cena did for the last year on Raw, even though he wasn't the champion. That's what I'm saying. But- but again, I again I respect your opinion and you lay out your arguments well. But I just wish they could have given him at least like a month and a half before they do the surprise thing. But like you said, let's put some drama into it, and we can disagree. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, and and look at all the backlash they've gotten over this too. I mean, they they might you know they might have been like, okay, let's get rid of Christian now. Oh fuck, you know, I mean, it's it's just a show, guys. It's. We don't know how it's going to play out yet. We will next Tuesday. It might not even be next Tuesday before they start really doing something with this. You know, they might have uh, Christian off the air next week and just kind of play up. He's that distraught about losing the title, you know. I don't know. Um, But 
people are jumping up and like not you guys, but I noticed a lot of people of this last week have been jumping up, chewing out Randy Orton, cursing out Randy Orton fans. I have no problem with Randy Orton because yeah, no, no, I, I, I said I said that I said that. it's not you guys, but I'm right. saying there's there have oh. been some people that have been doing this, and I've got a huge problem with that because it's not their decision. Just like it's not Christian's decision to lose the belt, it's not Orton's choice to win the belt. Well, yeah, yeah there's 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 that expression about the player in the game. Yeah. Yeah, and viewers, if it seemed like I was coming off like I was anti-Orton, I'm not. I think Orton's a great talent, and you should be a champion. It's no, just were, I don't you, like you the were, booking. You you were fine. You you were you were you're keeping it accurate to the booking. Yeah, um, even though I was yelling at you, and I apologize but, for that. Dude. It's it's just people get so worked up over this stuff, and it's, it's not just that. Like that, people get like I understand, you know, hating the booking. I'm not too big a fan of this myself, but I can understand. Mm -hmm. But just like you were getting very emotional about the booking, other people get have been getting emotional about other things that don't have really, you know, okay, they might be politicking backstage, and, you know, affecting the booking indirectly, but it's still not their decision. That's so. I mean, it, it had, the episode hadn't even aired. And, and people were flipping their shit on Orton and Orton fans and things like that, and you know, cursing out Vince and saying, "I'm not going to watch the show now." And then when they actually did watch the show, they're like, "Oh wow, that was a lot different than I thought it would be. This is going to get interesting." So it's just like, why did it play out? I mean, we can talk about you know what it is in context here, but don't act like it's the end of the world. And on the subject of Orton, I, I, I've seen his Twitter, and he's been very mature in responding to the people saying like, oh, how dare you? And again, another rumor that's been going around is he was very against getting the title. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, there's a report that basically said that Orton did not have any pull backstage to, to affect the, the finish or, or to like change it or whatever. And that, that's, some, that's something I said to someone earlier in the week is you think about, you know, guys like Edge, Orton, Christian, uh, uh, Cena, Jericho, these, this current crop of like top superstars, none of them really seem like the kind of guys. There's, there's not really too much report, too many reports going around about them trying to monopolize the spotlight and keep yeah, yeah. younger guys down or let lower guys down. They're pretty good about, at least publicly, about building other people up and not wanting to hot shot the belt and all this other stuff. Based off of what reports I've seen, I don't know if you guys have seen anything to to the contrary. And if you do, I'd love to see it. But you know, it, it goes back to the thing: like, think about what you're talking about, calm down, and let it play out. You can be upset about this one moment, but don't condemn the whole product from here on out and go tomorrow because of it. There's going to be next week SmackDown and the week after that, and the next pay per view, and so on and so forth. You know. Let's see where it goes before you condemn things. Is all my is all I'm saying. Mm. Very well said. But uh, I mean, we we couldn't really describe the match so much tonight because it, it was very it was overshadowed by by the discussion about the the finish. Like we if if we were to even try to like do it in detail, like I I, I put over one segment, but. We were trying yeah, to I do think it, it was in, overshadowed by Rock's birthday party still. That's just me. You know, that could be another reason. <laughs> but, like, if if I had gone on to try to describe it, it, it would have been, like, way too anticipatory. Like, we... we yeah, you, the, just, ma the match you was... You know it's coming. You, you just kind of, like, focusing on that in that light at the end of the yeah. tunnel instead of the tunnel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a great match, but... Great match. Lost. Christian did... Like someone, I saw someone say, "There's a difference between losing a title and jobbing." That's very true. And Christian made a perfect argument for that art, uh, statement being true yeah. in this match. He did not job. He did not look weak at all. Um, yeah, it was a good match. It's just like you said, Keith. It's the situation bogged it down. So I was like, "I'm enjoying this match, but I know what's going to happen." And I hate how they booked it, but well, you that's know, wrestling. Just, you, can't, you can't let one thing you don't like ruin the whole thing for you. Yeah. I, I mean, I even enjoyed the match for what it was. It was good, but I know what's going to happen, so that ruined it in my mind. So I was just like, if it would have been a, again, my thing, my argument, pay per view, a couple uh, weeks later, they did the same thing. Not a problem, but just this, that, that ruined it for me. But looking back, it is a good match, and we should recognize it as being a good match because it was. Yeah, it was. And think about it this way What would your reaction have been overall 
had you seen it live without knowing the result. Well, I probably would have been sitting there saying, like, oh, this is a good match, but I'd probably be under the assumption that Christian is going to win and uh, Randy's going to turn heel. That would have been my prediction. And when that finish came up, I, I, I could picture myself just sitting in the crowd like, wait, what? Did that just happen? Yeah, if I was there live, I still have the same reaction. Yeah, I, I just be like, huh? I, I, th- I think brain. I would have honestly been caught up in the moment. Like, Holy fuck, that was a great match! And not really care about the result so much. Just that, you know, that was a fucking hell of a match. But, I don't know, again, that's just me. Yeah. Well, well, in, con- we'll in conclusion, we'll, we'll see how this plays out. Plays out. We'll discuss how it plays out and... uh this is this has been the dark match. We 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 will end as we usually do with our our uh, yeah. famous segment. What gets more screen time than Jay Lethal? Yeah, I love this game. He's in neither of these companies, but uh, <laughs> I'd say Pitbull and the rest of the useless celebrities got more screen time than Jay Lethal. He took my answer, dude. You, you just Jake. carpet bombed the entire like selection of answers this week. Thanks, Dick. You caused poop. Uh, now this. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say Chavo Guerrero gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. <laughs> okay. Uh, He's not dressed up as a bird, either. Uh, nope. Greg Colley's manager, Bollywood friend. Uh, damn it. Do you have to take my answer? That was fine. Um, the other one would have been better. Oh, God. Separated shoulders get more screen time than Jay Lethal? I don't know. No, no, no. That's kind of mean. Um, I'm just pulling stuff out of my ass. You do that a lot, don't you? Duh, have you Chris's brother speak? gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. Uh, <laughs> uh, nah, I'm not feeling that one either. No, you, you, Lillian uh, Garcia gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. No, no, I'm not. You know what? You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it with Kali. Um, Kali dressed up as a fairy gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I think that's it for us then. Uh, this has been the dark match. I am Backlash. I'm Tifus. I'm Mag and I'm going down the long grinding road. And I'm Christopher says we'll see you next week. Hey, Boy, give me that out of catchphrases there. Oh, no, it's my slinky. <laughs> give me it. Give me it. Uh, hey, Tifus, dude, I apologize. I'm sorry about that, man. Nah, dude, you're fine. You just... Yeah, but when I said uh, talk, yeah, talk over me, that was just I was just saying that just for joking around purposes. I wasn't trying to hurt you, but I apologize, dude. Uh, hey, you, Lars, that, that, what do you that, think that, of that, Hey, Lars, what do you think of Christian winning the title? Yay! What do you think of Christian losing the title? Boo! What do you think about my foot in your ass? Minus five stars. <laughs> 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 Alright, I'm, I'm gonna restart this because it slowed down like in the middle of it. That's why I couldn't mute it when my brother was, was uh, acting a fool. Okay. It-